Hi, this is Kurt. I'm coming to you to talk a little bit about narrative writing, just to give you kind of a preview of what we'll be doing um, in class on Friday. Um, narrative writing is what we're all familiar with from day one, uh, storytelling. You know, our parents told us stories. Um, we made up stories uh, to frighten and delight our friends growing up. Uh, you know, we watch narrative on TV. We we've read narrative since you know the very beginning of our um, personal literacy. Uh, so it's something that is is very familiar to us, and yet it's something that is very profound in a way because it's through language that we make our reality, our perspectives, real and accessible to other people. Um, because if we're unable to communicate what we're feeling, what we're thinking, what we've experienced, um, then our experiences don't go beyond ourselves, don't go beyond our own uh, perception. And as such, you know, there's a school of thought, reader response, that suggests that the reader and the writer actually collaborate in the creation of the narrative because the writer is using his or her um, talents and experience hopefully to communicate something that is unknown or unfamiliar in many cases using language and terminology that can be familiar and thereby giving the um, reader a window, an opportunity to access that particular experience or rather to recreate that particular experience for him or herself. Not that reading about an experience is the same as experiencing it, but um, hopefully one can arrive at a degree of empathy um, based on being able to read and, 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 and um, take part in in that sense, uh, someone's narrative. Um, a story comes to mind from my own experiences in uh, in college, my own experiences as undergrad. Um, the first English class, writing class, literature class, what have you, that I took was called Experiences in Literature, and the idea is that literature becomes meaningful to the individual, when the individual can find uh, how that particular literature or that particular narrative um, relates to um, the particular reader's experience in some way. Um, so that if you could experientially um, encounter literature such that in, in a meaningful way, therefore um, literature becomes uh, important. Uh, and so, my point in all of this is that the instructor for that class uh, told a story. She said that when she was um, in college, she had been um, a, a, a writer for the school newspaper, and that she had published um, a number of articles that um, tended toward uh, racist. And... Um, that was her. That was her point of view, and then she read um, *Invisible Man* by Ralph Ellison, and Ralph Ellison, uh, through the strength of his writing, was able to bring uh, this person who had no context, um, no personal relationship, with the experiences of African Americans um, in American society was able to bring her close enough to that experience such that 
she changed her point of view on um, race issues and even published retractions um, to to the racial articles that she had published previously. Um, another great example of the transformative power of narrative is the um, novel um, Uncle Tom's Cabin by Harriet Beecher Stowe. If we look historically at Harriet Beecher Stowe, this is not a woman who traveled south. This is not a woman who um, n you know, knew a whole lot about the south firsthand, knew a whole lot about slavery firsthand, but she did see um, slaves um, on river boats, perhaps. And what she did was she used metaphor to transform people's point of view. Because at the time in uh, American society, popular American society, particularly in the South, but also in the North, um, in Midwest, and, and so forth, uh, a lot of um, a lot of um, congregations, uh, churches, taught that slavery was indeed biblical, um, and indeed Christian, and used examples from, say, um, um, Levitical law, uh, the Old Testament, and so on and so forth. To to to, uh, I, I I would like to add misreading of the Old Testament. I'm not trying to say that that anyone who who abides by the Old Testament in any way is, is in support of slavery. I'm not saying that at all. Uh, I just want to go on the record as, as saying that. But, um, but, but in the 18, uh, 40s, you know, 50s and before, um, in many congregations in the U.S., it was just understood that, um, you know, hey, slavery is biblical. Um, if you are harboring a slave, you are... Uh, stealing and stealing somebody's property um, and so on and so forth in fact in the great um, novel Huckleberry Finn um, Huckleberry Finn believes that he's going to hell because he is helping his friend Jim who happens to be a slave escape um, from, uh, from from slavery so but the point being though that Harriet Beecher Stowe uh, flips the metaphor okay what she shows in her novel is the metaphor that she she uses in her novel is that um, slavery is fundamentally not Christian, and to be a slave holder is to be not Christian, and this had a profound effect on uh, the readership, uh, popular readership, and took the abolitionist movement from something that was basically uh, a fringe movement, you know, uh, hey, you know, those, those crazy abolitionists or those extremist abolitionists over there, took that from, a, from an extremist movement and transformed it to a uh, populist movement or, or a, or a middle-of-the-road mainline movement. Um, and had some degree of effect on um, on the eventual election of um, Abraham Lincoln, and of course we know what happens from there. My point is that if you are able to use language, take take um, take language that perhaps everyone is familiar with, and 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 and, and craft it, order it. Um, in such a way that you're able to communicate um, perhaps something that someone else is unfamiliar with, um, that maybe you have intimate knowledge of. What you've done is you've reached out to um, a, a reader and you've made your experience um, part of their lives in some fashion. And I think that's that's very powerful. Um, pardon me. So what I'm primarily going to be asking you to do with regard to narrative writing is to take a step in the direction of digital storytelling. 
that is um, if you read the assignment that's um, listed for week one uh, you're gonna find a, a photograph um, either you know hey you might you might take a selfie I'm not I'm not I'm not specific on this uh, in the instructions is particularly uh, vague you know uh, intentionally vague I should say so you know you can take a selfie you can scan in a photo from um, your family history if you choose not to do that you can you can um, um, scan in a, a historical photo something to that effect but what you're going to do is you're going to construct a narrative around that photo you're going to look at that photo as if it is a moment captured in time and you're going to give you're going to create a story create a narrative that gives that photograph context you know what's going on in that photograph who are the who are the players in that in that photograph um, what led up to that particular moment um, what happens after um, or perhaps you will structure your story such that the the story concludes on the uh, moment in the moment of the photograph you know uh, th that it doesn't matter so much to me so long as you're using the photograph as a catalyst for storytelling um, as inspiration uh, as a jumping off point for storytelling a lot of what I uh, when I talk to students about narrative um, a an analogy that a lot of students understand is that the writer of a narrative is very much like a director of a film the director of a film chooses um, what essentially appears on the screen okay and by way of editing, by way of making those choices, that um, that director um, actually influences the way that the story is told. Because obviously, um, viewers get to see what the director um, uh, intends, and so therefore. Um, what's not shown on the screen, what is shown on the screen, all of that communicates a variety of messages. So keep that in mind when you're writing. You are like a film director when you're creating narrative. Um, you choose what appears on the page um, and uh, thereby what you're doing is you are signifying reality you are making your experience real and accessible to your reader and that's a, that's incredibly powerful it's incredibly powerful and it's a skill that we all have we've all had from like I said you know toddlerhood on up um, this is just an opportunity for you to hone that um, ability um, and I hope we have fun with it. Um, if you have any questions, of course, my contact information is in the um, instructor office and bio um, section of the class. And also, if you want to send me um, drafts of this a as you go along, feel free to do so. I would prefer to get all the drafts um, by uh, Saturday because. Um, Obviously, um, I need to, to have some turnaround time because the due date for this project um, is going to be Tuesday uh, by midnight. Okay, uh, Tuesday, as in Tuesday of the second week of the term. Even though this is an assignment for the first week, we're off to a uh, slow start um, because uh, that's that's kind of the nature of um, independent studies. Um, I'm really happy to to be joining you um, in this process um, and uh, like I said there, there's, there are two, two students in the class and we'll all get together um, this Friday and, uh, and, and we'll work out kind of hammer out the rest of the details of the course and um, I'll kind of figure out what you are wanting to get out of the course and what I'm my expect you'll get a better idea of what my expectations are 
and we'll move on from there. Um, again, there's no way, there's no place to go but up. There's no, there's, there's, there's. This is an exciting prospect. Um, the uh, idea of just improving your um, capacity uh, and skills as as writers. Um, I know that writing can be very, um, very uh, anxiety-ridden for a lot of people, myself included. I am 41 years old. I've been in academics uh, as an instructor of record for 17 years. Um, prior to that, of course, I was a student for a long time. Uh, and so I've written my fair share of essays. And I can tell you that I have been in situations such that I've been paralyzed uh, with um, with writer's block um, because um, my fear, of course, is being judged, is being assessed as unintelligent or something to that effect because of the um, quality or lack thereof of my writing. Um, Writing anxiety is 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 real. It, it, it's 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 a, it's a real thing, but I empathize with that. I go through it myself even to this day. Um, the main thing is get something on the page. Um, no matter how stupid you think it is, or incomplete you think it is, or grammatically incorrect you think it is get something on the page to start because you can always edit it out later as you go along but you gotta have something to start with and I think for this beginning assignment the photo is a good way to have something you know a, a, a starting off point something with with which to um, build upon right so um, again this is Kurt um, I will be seeing you on Friday, and um, again, if you have any any information, I mean, um, pardon me, any uh, questions, concerns, etc., um, let me know. All right, thanks a lot.